five, four, three, two, one. Hello, I'm Nick Briggs, and you're listening to the legend of the traveling time, Tire Tardis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you say traveling time. Do it again. Just do it again. Just for the go. Okay. Just for the sake. <laughs> go ahead. Three. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. Hello, I'm Nicholas Briggs, and this is the legend of the traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Basil. Years ago, I had an idea. I got myself a TARDIS. Took it to new places, met a lot of new people, took some great pictures, and talked Doctor Who. From Krypton Radio and the creators of the Hanging With web show, this is the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Join me on my latest adventures and become part of the legend. I'm wow. keeping it, Nick. I'm keeping it. <laughs> yeah, you've got to. You've that intro is just, in. <laughs> just got to. It has to We're keeping that in. <laughs> there will be. It is now not only on video, it is now forever in audio. Thank you so much there, folks. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here at the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. Thank you for joining us for those of you who were with our uh, interview with Colin Spall earlier on our live feed. Thank you, and thank you for joining us here on our live feed now with the legendary Nicholas Briggs. Is that even fair to say? I'm going with it. I'm going with it. Uh, yes. with me to, let me go ahead and introduce my panel. Well, I don't, you know what? Nick doesn't age. I don't believe you age at if all. I think you just put up, I, I think you just put on a beard and that's how you look old. That's how <laughs> you got. I just want to say that's this to everybody. You. Yeah. Let me go ahead and introduce the game. I want to tell, I want to tell everybody a little bit of trivia, just a weird trivia about you there. You're going to enjoy this though. I want to introduce the lovely Melanie Dean, who is our co-host director mm -hmm. and artiste. If you want to check it out, if you're checking up on the live feed, you can see some of her wonderful work and the traveling Tardis. Three months now, little boy blues been in lockdown at your house. Uh, well, it came back from the UK and had to go into quarantine just like me. I know. And, uh, it's just been sitting around here hanging out. So, <laughs> if you want it in the I mail, we'll put it in the post. She says that, <laughs> but does she do it? No. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, I have no segue here that because I'm the lousy segue in the world. I have Mr. Matthew Crisall. Mr. Crisall is with the Conquest Cerberus, and um, we just want—I uh, wanted to make uh, just a remind everybody: Conquest Cerberus has now moved to October. Well, Matthew, you talk about Conquest Cerberus. I'm going to just yeah. ruin it. Of course, North Alabama's Doctor Who convention. It'll be October 10th and 11th, hopefully. Um, COVID, uh, COVID in the state of Alabama, pending, of course. And uh, I'll be our seventh event, I believe, and we'll be hopefully joined by uh, Catherine Tate, Donna Noble herself, Eric and Eliza Roberts, and Kelly Yates of the IDW and Titan Doctor Who Comics range. Awesome. Nice. Awesome there. And um, do you have any guests uh, as far as uh, uh, lined up as of yet, or is it the same guest? Or It'll be the same guest, hopefully. Well, once again, once again, fingers crossed. Can, can I make a mention? <laughs> <laughs> we've we i will say we have been in touch with mr briggs's representatives and never heard anything back so oh, oh. what who what, which representatives i think so whoever does your website it has been a while but we did get, try and get in touch oh, okay that's my wife <laughs> oh no <laughs> maybe she doesn't want you coming to alabama i don't know uh, that's it. Oh, she does have a big thing against Alabama. No, <laughs> that's understandable, really. Oh my! Uh, I would, I would well, be way out of the That was a great show. Hi, everybody, good night. Now, <laughs> it's like taking down the uh, shower curtain there. <laughs> and if you have a chance right now, please, uh, you can subscribe to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis on Spreaker, on our family of iHeartRadio. Melanie D does not know what that icon is, so I have to tell her it is Podbean. <laughs> 
Spotify, uh, uh, radio.com, NSC Live TV. You can check us out mm. out there. We are also on uh, pretty much anywhere where you can get your podcasts from. Uh, we are on Apple, iPod, Tunes, or whatever the heck they want to call themselves now this week. And we want to thank our sponsors. Also, you can catch us. Uh, uh, episodes drop on kryptonradio.com, run by Gene Turnbow and Susan Fox. Um, lovely couple who uh, 24 hours of nonstop geekery. Anything geek-wise, kryptonradio.com. They play the music from uh, John Williams. They play uh, Lord of the Rings, Doctor Who, Star Trek, Star Wars, you name it. It's 24 hours, no matter where you're listening to, kryptonradio.com. You got to check it out out there. And now I want to uh, put up a big picture of Nick Briggs. Let me find what? it over here. I have a big picture. Oh, so wait. No, I'm sorry. That that's not not, oh, oh, no, not not that one either. I'm sorry there. Not that. One. Oh, oh God. I'm really sorry there. So if yeah, exactly. <laughs> that one is the one I love. This one. Now, did you do that? Um, uh, was it that Henry Caviezel thing? Did they blot out the beard or something like that? <laughs> oh, did I just that? didn't have a beard then. Oh, yeah, you didn't? Is, uh, no, I, I do shave it off from time to time, but I think I was going through a long beardless period at that point. <laughs> uh, that sounds depressing. <laughs> Speaking of which, there is an actual, I, I don't know that, uh, what was it called, Nick? Um, uh, it's, um, there is a Facebook page dedicated and to there is, yeah. facial and, hair. And I am dead serious. Beard, beard Appreciation Society. Yeah. I'm serious. <laughs> there is. Do, Melanie has got that look. <laughs> like, yeah, there is. I do you, pop in from time to time. He to, does. Uh, just give them an update on the beard. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kevin, does, uh, Kevin Parker set it up. He's a very nice man. And it's very, you know, to coin a phrase, tongue-in-cheek. Uh, they're, not, they're not seriously interested in my bit. They're just having a little joke at my expense, basically. Okay. <laughs> but people, you could have just with, ran with it, just say, you know what? There's fans yeah. of this hair. There's well, fans people, of this. Thing. I know. Get in touch with me and say, "Am I right in thinking you've got a Facebook page?" About your <laughs> beard? You know. I said, "Yes, yeah. I'm very proud of it. Very proud of it." <laughs> All fairness, a lot of people have had have, have had quarantine beards and just qu quarantine everything. So, yeah, why yeah, not? yeah. My, no, but mine I is a quarantine beard, but you know, but this it was there just, before the quarantine. Exactly. Yes, it was there way before the quarantine. Just like there is, a, and 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 Nick goes in there every so often, take a picture of him, so, does a selfie, and just says, "Here's what's going on with the beard today." I'm like. Every now, every now and again, I shave it off completely, and there's, you know, just to appall everyone. You know, like, oh! actually, the last time I shaved it off, I did not like what I saw underneath. I just, wait, wait, no, wait, wait, going, wait, wait. Look at that handsome man right there. Yeah, Look but at that, that was years Sherlock ago. Holmes. That was years ago. Oh, that, was, that was at least ten years ago. Least. Melanie, tell me, if he shaved the beard, he would still look like that. Absolutely, I think I'd, I'd look yeah. a bit scrawnier. But no, I understand that my husband does that same thing where he'll have facial hair and then at some point where it's just, it's got to the point where it's just too itchy. And he's like, you know what? I'm just going to shave it off and just moisturize and everything. And he does it and I'll just walk into a room and go, who are you? Because <laughs> yeah, it's just kind yeah. of arresting because I haven't seen him like that in a while. And then it just yeah. slowly, it, it comes back. Yes. Because we get, but once we, you know, the beard like board thing, it's, a good, it's a good age shield because once you, put that thing on your face, allow it there. It's what people mostly see when they look at you. And mm -hmm. so they don't take so much notice of how everything else is going wrong. <laughs> That's it's what Benjamin Cook thing. suggested to me anyway. You know Ben Cook, late of Doctor Who magazine? Well, I don't know whether he still writes for them, doesn't he? But yeah, he said, you've got the perfect trick there. Because also having no hair at all, you can't really tell how white it's going because it's all shaved <laughs> off, you know? But I've I've never heard of that. It's an age shield. That yeah, is yeah. like the most perfect just it's noun to explain. No, it's, it's, it's protecting me. So Love if you that. want people not to know your age, shave all your hair off and grow a beard. Like, okay, that's free I'll get right on that. For all of <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I've got the best Italian DNA. Oh, I, could, I could probably I get to do it. I was thinking of dyeing it purple. What do we think? Ooh, well, you get the get the length and then do the raccoon kind of. Band in there. That would be that. That would be arresting. Uh, no one will nice a little twist at the bottom. Of there. I'm not, but it does get quite long. Uh, and maybe I could do it then. But it really divides my friends. You know, some of them 
go yeah great idea my wife thinks it's a great idea but for example rob shimon went what what <laughs> I mean, he yeah, has Rob room was to just talk. Yeah. He has he room to talk utterly utterly appalled. Utterly. Rob was just worried about having his own beard upstaged. No one can upstage that beard. It's like, um, you know, they're, they're people who don't like to grow flowers and they just grow weeds in their garden. That's what Rob's beard is like. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't believe it. It flowers. is kind of wiry. <laughs> it's a little wiry there. Cultivating yeah. through negligence. Just well, look, look at all this. He doesn't have a vein bone in his body. That's the thing about, uh, you know, I've ter I spend ages fiddling around with my beard and sort of, get, you know, people say, oh, that's nicely cut, isn't it? Like, you know, well, if you're an actor, you're largely going to be vain, aren't you? Let's, let's face it. <laughs> well, well we, yeah, we, honestly, it's that's that's the moneymaker. You, you have to exactly. make sure everything is, you know, not sure anymore, and but once good. upon a time, it, it might have um, been. <laughs> if you're just joining us on the live chat, yeah, we're talking about Nick's beard. <laughs> I think that we just spend and an hour vanity. Just doing this. Yes. Yes, man. <laughs> well, speaking of which, you were talking about Rob Sherman. We had him on the show a while back, and he was mm. he was going. You were talking about Van had just uh, the hardest time, the funniest time I've ever laughed is uh, Rob Sherman was explaining um, about he because he had COVID nineteen. He was going like, he "Oh, did, yes, yes. I, didn't you hear we had a pan a pandemic?" Oh it, yes, it's just such an inconvenience to that. It's like well, that is something. Him. He also he also Rob. wanted to do the the interview. I think two a.m. his time because he's like, yeah. oh, I, I'm just more lucid then. Oh yeah, Rob doesn't keep the same hours as the rest of the human race. <laughs> oh my god, he's he my, doesn't. He's, he's like, oh, it's almost three. We could keep going. I'm like, really? He, yeah, he's he. he He's my best friend and was my best man at my wedding oh. well, you know, ten, 10 years oh. ago. So that that's just to prove to you he is my best friend. You know? And and he he is really difficult to get hold of because he lives different hours, doesn't, you know, conform to other people's means of communication. It's really um, it's always a joy to finally get in touch with him. But mm -hmm. sometimes it takes me about two weeks to track him down. No, that's so absolutely right. I have a friend. I think we all have a friend like that because I, I have one that I mean, I've known him since high school and we won't talk for maybe six months at a time, mm -hmm. not out of maliciousness. It's just he's aloof. It's just how he works. And if I do, it's like two o'clock in the morning on a Thursday. All of a sudden I get a text message from Marcus like, oh, hey, how are you? You know, that kind of that kind of thing. Yeah. And we're just right yeah. back together again. Well, that's, that's the funny part. It's a, it, uh, because everybody's in the UK. That the, our friends in the UK, Rob Sherman and Sophie Aldred, all of them, and it, it, it's just our relationship. It's just you're busy. I also need emails and say, "Hey, what's going on?" Just just to say hi, you know, and just uh, just to keep up, and it will go dead silent. And then all of a sudden, it will there'll be a Facebook posting. I'll just say, uh, "I need to find a way to uh, talk about my new audio drama," and they're just like, "Do you want to come back?" And next thing I know, I'm getting a PM. <laughs> I'm just like, "Yeah, I want to come back." <laughs> It's just like it's, just, it's all good times there, Nick. It's all it's all good times when you when you when we have you on the show. I love it. Uh, speaking of loving it, I do. We do have some chats coming in. We have do have people talking. So let me go ahead. Wow. Um, uh, let me go ahead and bring them on there. First of all, we want to introduce Graham Kraus. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for spending your Saturday morning. Well, thank you for joining us here with our special interview with Nick. And want to thank uh, Matthew and Melanie for coming up and paneling up today. There, um, Joel. McKeel, howdy y'all, and uh, he does say that not loosely at all. Whatever, howdy y'all, howdy y'all. Um, Joe, do me a howdy. favor because I was on his show. Send me a link, and we'll post it up in there in just a few moments to your show out there. J.R. Hibbard. Now, I don't know if you've ever met this man, Nick, but he is our premier fourth doctor. If you've ever oh. seen his stuff, he looks spot on. His um, uh, his his. Uh, uh, demeanor when he goes around the conventions is of tom baker's and he carries jolly babies and all that and oh. he has well he also he has the height and he has a deep baritone as well so he yes. he really tries to get within the character so he, and his, yes. his costume yes. is beautiful and he has an instagram page i think it's the fourth doctor the dot the fourth dot doctor at instagram um good morning all good morning all Thanks, Joel. I'll never get over that. Good morning, all. Sorry I missed the interview with Colin. I have my coffee now, and I'm ready for another great episode this morning. Thank you. Good. Lady Gallifrey, better known as Gina Barras. Good morning, everybody. And I, get, I can't thank this woman enough. I've never really given her her due, but this is Meredith Lauren. 
Uh, Meredith is the reason why we even have the StreamYard. And she's been very supportive of local stuff uh, like Melanie when she does her paintings live, like the Traveling Tardis, uh, like uh, Brian K. Morris, all, all these people out here, all these local. She's a big supporter. So if you get a chance, Meredith, put some links up. I'm going to post them up here so everybody can see on the private chat because you definitely deserve a, a big hand for all the for all the stuff you do for the local stuff. Now, for back to um, talking about Nick Sprig and uh, his Facebook site. But Nick, for those who may have just joined Doctor Who recently, who may not be mm. familiar with your work or heard it on um, Doctor Who, tell us a little bit about yourself and just tell us a little bit about Big Finish. Okay, a little bit about myself. Uh, well, um, I work on the TV series of Doctor Who as the voice of the Daleks, the Cybermen, the Jadu, lots of monsters and things. Um, but yeah, my day job is creative director um, executive producer of uh, Big Finish Productions. Big Finish Productions have, uh, since 1999, had a license from the BBC to make original Doctor Who audio drama, and we use uh, uh, all the surviving classic Doctors. Uh, we've we've worked with David Tennant as well, but um, yeah. Does that sort of cover it? Uh, yeah. Most recently, because... Most so that was the Cliff's Notes, because, I mean, the amount of big Finnish audios mm -hmm. out there and the depth and how you've taken this, the, the universe that you've seen on, on, on television and just oh. exploded it. I mean, just, just thinking of, like, the Paternoster Gang and just all yeah. these other amazing stories. And it's not just, like, one little story. I mean, you just, okay, we're going this way with the universe and we're going this way with the universe. It's... Yeah. You really condensed it down, but I, I, I want all, all of our listeners to know just there's so much of a wealth of amazing, as you say, you love stories. And it's, yes. I mean, our biggest problem is when people go to bigfinish.com, they go, oh, where do I start? You know, because mm -hmm. there's just so much of it. And we don't just do Doctor Who, we do other things. We do Space 1999, most recently, yep. and uh, The Prisoner, The yeah. Avengers, yeah. Uh, the Callan, um, and lots, lots and lots of Torchwood, obviously, a yeah. Doctor Who spin off there. And Dorian. Class, funny enough, we've done that. Yeah. Dorian Gray, which is an entirely original thing created by uh, wonderful Scott Hancock. Uh, and talking of originals, um, um, Nick, 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 I, I'm sorry. Let me put you on hold because we are on a hard break. But when we return, we're going to continue our discussion with Nick Briggs with Big Finish. We're going to get into that. And I did want to get into the question on how we could start people who've never heard of or maybe just questioning about getting into Big Finish, how to get into Big Finish. We return. Please continue to stay logged on, tune in, and continue to become part of the legend. <laughs> And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Basil. If you're joining us on the live feed, thank you so much. Don't forget to chat into the description. If you're on the Facebook page or the YouTube channel, if you're on uh, if you're on uh, the uh, Krypton Radio Facebook page or the Hanging With, you can just chat as if you were discussing with us, and we'll all see it. Uh, we'll definitely uh, want to continue our discussion with Nick Briggs. I'm here with Matthew Crisol of Conquest Herbis in Huntsville, Alabama. Check him out on October. We'll get more into that discussion at the end of the show. I'm here with the lovely director, Melanie Dean, as well as co-host and artiste. If you're watching live on the YouTube channel, uh, on the, uh, the Facebook or YouTube channel, uh, you can see all of her magnificent artwork in the background out there. Yes. Gorgeous artwork here. But speaking of gorgeous, we're, we're talking about man's facial hair. This is Nick Briggs. Uh, I, I wanted to continue that discussion that you were having there um, because mm -hmm. we were going into how much, how much product big finish has out there and yes uh big finish we do love stories there and if you, after the show please check it out at bigfinish.com bigfinish.com but nick go ahead originals yeah, just saying yes, originals. Gonna, oh that's yes. right um, uh, to celebrate our 20th anniversary which was a year or so ago now we decided rather than looking back and celebrating all the wonderful stuff we have done we wanted to celebrate our creativity so we came up with the idea of doing an originals range where we created uh completely original stuff not based on established franchises just to sort of demonstrate our own creativity and uh i have written and directed and created a, a big finish original series called the human frontier which is a sci-fi epic which has just recently come out and i'm really grateful to say it's had rave reviews and i've just had a, a second series confirmed I think it's the, wow! Oh gosh! Yeah, yeah. So it's the uh, the quickest selling, I think, of all of them. Um, and uh, yeah, 
check it out. The um, the first episode is actually free on the site. And that's something where you were talking before the break about, mm -hmm. you know, what to pe how do people get into Big Finish? What what do they do first? And if you go to bigfinish.com and you, collect, uh, you click the collections tab at mm -hmm. the top, you can see that one of the collections is Big Finish for free. And everything in that collection is free to download. I mean, you have to register on the site, but that costs you nothing. Uh, and, and for example, the Human Frontier Possibility of Life, which is uh, the first um, uh, episode, that's free. And you'll see loads of first episodes of things to give you a real taste of what's going on. I'm just scrolling down now, and it just goes on forever. There's a unit. There's uh, the Companion Chronicles, uh, the Daleks there, there's H.G. Wells stuff, ooh, The Shape of Things to Come, uh, I just, uh, Dan Dare. <laughs> Everybody's uh, pulled out their man. Man. I'm just whizzing through the Avengers, you know, there's just loads of stuff and it's yeah. all free and you can just download it there. Oh, Dracula starring Mark Dracula, Gatiss. Dracula, yeah. Yeah, uh, Terror Hawks. I'm sure you're all big Terror Hawks fans. <laughs> uh, yeah, just the list is almost never ending. So that's a good way uh, to, for you to get a flavor of what we do. And then there are an awful lot of releases that are, um, we have regular special offers. So, uh, you know, very yes. low prices as well. So, you know, there's... there was a, there was an incredible sale. I mean, I was just, um, we're because of the situation here with COVID and people being furloughed or laid off. I was watching the money situation. And one day there was an incredible sale. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was like, you know what? I'm, I, I always say, you know, I, I was just filling in the blanks. I was just, yeah. you can get free audios. And I just, uh, I, what was it? Well, and what you're showing there is the Big Finish app, app. which is yeah. a free yep. listening app. And uh, there we are. Look, that's a brilliant advert. Yes. There. It is. It, honestly, it's a very, very user-friendly app. So if anyone's just kind of like listening and you're like, you know what, what the heck, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and download the app. Go onto your app store, go onto Google Play, get the app. It's honestly very easy to navigate. And it's, it's I've never had any technical issue with it. It's simple. It's, you can once you per make a purchase, you can download it, and it's on it's on your device. I mean, on I can't say enough. And yeah, just the content. Look at that scrolling like mad. Also, you can get our free digital magazine on there, Vortex, which has got all behind the scenes uh, stuff, interviews with writers and all the creatives, and uh, more and more free stuffs available on there. And the uh, the free stuff now can get you can if you click that you want this, you can get little push notices that tell you when there's free stuff out. So. What's not to love about that? Yes. It fits all in the comedy. <laughs> we just became Thank the biggest you, we just became an infomercial <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. No, there was, there was one day there was... We're also to talk was... about the human frontier. Yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> but we got to make some sales here. Though. <laughs> yes, but yeah, please. There was, there was I'm going to look great... at the sales figures after this. Now, if we have to sell <laughs> one copy of the human frontier, I'm going to want my money back. Oh, hold on. I haven't paid it. <laughs> <laughs> Sending, yeah, we gotta get it. But yeah, there was there. No there question. These... I know that you haven't heard the Human Frontier yet, and you see, well, yeah, to, I just, I've got just... to convince you to to get it. What 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 do you want to know that would convince you? Uh, you wrote it. It's big finish. I think that was enough convincing right there. That I just, that, but well, time, but but, but yeah, it's just simply time because uh, there was one big sale. I've got to confess, uh, and I literally, I'll read off the titles. I just went mm. insane because, like I said. I, I normally just like I wait for the sales. I got the um, uh, Doctor Who ID, Medicinal Purposes, Night Thoughts, Scaredy Cat, Scherzo, which is one of my favorites. Rob, uh, uh, Rob Sherman. Yeah, I hate that one. You hate that one? <laughs> I'm Are always you saying that to Rob just to annoy Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate it. What's that about? <laughs> uh, so I, I know that that. Our... he's my best friend. Yeah, I know yeah. Christian had made us, um, not made us, but it was the, the, you put out the edict of everybody saying, hey, download the War Master, you know, oh, beneath yeah. uh, the so we can start, because yes. that's going to be the next big finished review that we're going to be doing. And so I'm, I'm, I've, I haven't started yet, but I have, I purchased and downloaded it and I just need to. Yeah. But, yeah. It's a fantastic set. If you haven't heard the War Master, that first War Master set, it is a fantastic mm -hmm. piece of work. Love, it, I love the theme tune as well. I thought they did a great yeah. job of that. Yeah. And, and, yes. and as Nick says, you can actually, you can get first portions of audio. The, the way that I mentioned is uh, the, the free comic book day. 
there's always the first intro to that series. If you're not interested, you don't have to get, but you at least listen to a portion of it. But exactly. I, I got to say, I don't, the, the, the free ones, uh, Jenny, Jenny one, I, I Jenny, yeah, the, the doctor's, doctor's daughter, the, yeah. The, yeah, stolen goods. I'm going to be getting into that when I have time. There's just no time in the world. <laughs> I, <laughs> That's I, the I, problem, I is the, yeah, yeah. yeah, because when we used to go to, what I used to do is, because I have, uh, let me get here. Oh, God. And he's left. Guy. And he's, he's gone. Going, okay. Anyway, I'm going, I'm going highly professional care we have. No, this, no, I will tell you, this is and just left. a thumbnail. <laughs> when I used to go to conventions and go and, uh, yeah, you yeah, know, get the yeah. CDs, yeah. Uh, because I would listen to them because the conventions would be in like Lake City or Miami, and I would listen to a whole episode on the way to the convention mm -hmm. and on the way back. So it made my trip. Mm -hmm. But now I can listen to them on audio, put on Bluetooth, and just and just go but i still have all of these you know um oh yeah gallifrey. Them, yeah. the gallifrey oh, yeah. series we almost yes. forgot about that yeah. i yes. love Very her at the, as the third romana she has oh, done yes. an excellent Very job Juliet Lindau. so yes um so okay. what what is the human frontier what is the, the, the <laughs> yes. basic i know let's back to topic christian Yes, yes. Come on. Come on. Okay. Well, you got to convince me to listen to what the, is the human which, frontier, I, which I'm already going to listen to. But let's 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 hear. You got to convince. It's, me. it's it's an epic sci-fi series. It's an epic journey as well. It's about um, it's about many things. But the the uh, original idea was I'm fascinated by the idea because you see it on social media all the time of how people from different versions of human civilization clash all the time because they have different ideas about what they hold dear to themselves. And I always think that in Doctor Who, you know, uh, people are always a bit suspicious about the ones that go into the past. But, you know, the past is, is like uh, an alien planet, really, mm. with different people and different values. And I think if we were really to just travel back 50 years, we would all find ourselves in a very uncomfortable position the way we speak, the vocabulary we use, mm -hmm. the assumptions about what is true or important, all those mm -hmm. kind of things. Imagine going back 300 years, it would be almost impossible to survive, I think. And so I just had this idea that what would happen if in the future two versions of the human race were separated in time? And the idea basically is that some um, uh, a businessman decides to fund a mission to a planet a long way away. He puts about a thousand people into cryogenic suspension and sends them off. It's going to take them about a thousand years to get there. Well, funnily enough, when they get there, the human race has evolved to a point where faster than light travel exists. And there's a whole bunch of, uh, the human race has now colonized the planet they're going to, and they've been there for 300 years. So the difference, oh. and, and the cryogenic people, their journey was secret. So the people in the, who traveled faster than light to the planet don't know this other lot are turning up. So there's a whole culture clash about the difference between them. And also lots of cool sci-fi stuff going on around and on the planet as well. Like, like yes. Woody Allen and Sleepers. <laughs> if anybody remembers that movie. <laughs> no, yeah, but that's, that's a right. great that's a great concept that you, you you've that you've got a fixed point of time with these people that they're there that you've you've solved it by the whole cry, having them cryogenically frozen so you don't have to worry about them aging and that they can get over there and then start their lives again but here meanwhile yeah. while, when, while as they're going time's going the human race is going technology is going oh well bloop, we're already here while they're just still making their way that That's... was a perfect representation with a pen and your fingers <laughs> what i do I, i'm an analogy person <laughs> <laughs> that summed it up perfectly uh, yeah yeah it's uh also it's a love story uh it's a murder story as well it's it's the whole human experience and the only criticism i've received about it is that you know the people think oh it doesn't quite wrap everything up at the end i did that on purpose because i wanted a second series because of the second series yeah exactly you, and so, yeah. you know but i mean it is a satisfying story in itself i don't want people going into the first series thinking oh it's just not going to end is it? it's just going to go on um, but it's you know it it's got a beginning, middle, and end. It's just that there's possibility for more afterwards. So Is it, it was more a real of a passion for me? You know, writing this. It was uh, it had been in my mind for years, and finally had to splurge out in quite a short amount of time. It's fascinating because almost all the uh, writing I've done is just get that shower curtain sorted. <laughs> <laughs> It's when the shower starts working, you just get soaked. Um, all my writing has been for other people's 
ideas, Doctor Who, yeah. um, mm -hmm. 1999, um, The Prisoner, you know, so to actually be set free, but also put at risk by doing my own thing, it's mm -hmm. quite, because when, when, once you're just expressing your ideas, people are exposed to what's really going on in your head. Mm -hmm. And I've always said that the reason I do this job, which I'm so lucky to do, I, I, you know, I don't um, underestimate that, is to make the crazy stuff in my head come to life in some way. That's always, ever since being a child, that's always what I wanted to do, you know, whether you're playing with, um, you know, fit figures. <laughs> <laughs> little Dalek guest appearance there. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Christian's looking for his now. <laughs> he and wants to join in. Let's do, let's do a movie, okay. Let's we try can, that files. We can do a big finish audio right now I'm if we okay. wanted to. That's I have yeah, a Matt, Matt Smith. Matthew's, Matthew's yeah. one is my favorite, actually. Yes. Was, uh, yeah, oh. Character Options sent me this one because they thought I'd like it, which is nice. <laughs> actually, I say one. There's I, two I just like him. He was 10 bucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, but he, he's whole, so he's so detailed though. I like so, him. That's yeah. a whole pro oh that's is that an invasion cyberman? I oh well there you go. It is an invasion yeah, cyberman. My favorite kind. It's my favorite kind. I'll tell you a fascinating story. Yeah. This is fascinating in inverted commas, because it's not fascinating at all. On WhatsApp uh the other day, uh, a group of friends, they one of them, their their partner said, Nick, uh Brian wants to know whether this is your house. And I went. No, it's not my house. It's not even the house I'm going to move to soon because we're about to move house, by the way. Um, and he said, uh, the reason he thought it, she said, is because it looks like this, which was an Earthshock Cyberman. And I suppose when you looked at the door and everything, you could sort of see that sort of, you know, and I thought, oh, I see what he's getting at. And I said, the reason I didn't recognise it is because this is my favourite Cyberman. And I did put it on a picture on WhatsApp of... Uh, an invasion Cyberman. And of course, none of them are Doctor Who fans. And they said, there's a difference. <laughs> so just like, what? Yeah, what? Right. Of course yeah, there's the, a difference. Yeah, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> I told you it was The diehard Whovians will get you. <laughs> they will yeah, eat you alive you if you get them all wrong. Later, I'll tell you a fascinating fact about me moving house, if you like. Yes, actually, we'll, we'll hang on to that fact. Let's, Let's get back to the them. chats there. Uh, we have party music DJ Aki says, hey. Okay. Hey. <laughs> and there's J.R. Oh, Hibbert. Hibbert. Yep, he, yeah. The fourth Doctor mm -hmm. cosplay on Instagram and newly created and still loading hundreds of pictures. Yeah, he's still, uh, he just created the Instagram, but if, you, you got to check it out, Nick. He's, he's, it, it's, incredible I can't do there. Instagram. I'm too old. Well, okay. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter is my limit. And even that's that, mine too. And then I I'm can't even go on Twitter it. too much. Yes. Yeah, I just, I, I, it's a, I can't. I just go in there and it's like uh, it, it's like walking into a warring faction and then walking out. I'm like, no, not today. <laughs> it's, it's just crazy <laughs> in there now. Um, but oh, Graham yes. Krauss mentioned Doctor Who Victorious and looking oh, forward yeah. to Time Lord Victorious. Oh, yeah. Time, Time Lord Victorious. Time Lord Victorious. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm the guy who got the intro wrong, so I'm not correcting anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie, hello, says Kevin Mays. Woo. Hello, Kevin Mays. Yeah, Melanie will give me a hard time. Well, Simon, we, we had Simon Fisher Becker on the last show interview Colin Spa on the live feed just right before you. Oh, I have yeah. yet to say Dorian Maldivar correctly. <laughs> I keep I, on I, saying I, I, door handle Maldivar, you know, uh, <laughs> hold, the door, <laughs> hold the door, hold the door, or something. I, I will never. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Meredith Lauren. <laughs> That's all I. I know. should do that. I should do that to him. Nicholas, do you all uh, do you all play practical jokes on the set? Are you regulated to the basement with a microphone to play by yourself as a voiceover actor? <laughs> well, I am on the set uh, for all the recordings. Well, most of them anyway. There was one um, Asylum of the Daleks where they there was a new director and he didn't realize Nick Hurran, he was brilliant, but he didn't realize that I was meant to be on the set. So they were trying to film it without me there. And it was getting really, really complicated about finding ways of making the lights flash. And they thought, how will we know that? And Matt Smith eventually said, would it be too difficult to get Nick Briggs here? And they all went, oh, that's an idea. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, and, uh, so cool. when I saw that, I said, I, I see I uh, have you to thank for, for coming to the set this time. And he said, yeah, well, he said, I'm not being funny, but I mean, it can't be that expensive. I said, well, sadly, you're right, Matt. It's not very expensive at all to get me to the set. 
<laughs> but yes, I am there. I, my, the rule of thumb is any bit of scenery you see behind a Dalek, I'm usually behind that. Yeah, so exactly. I'm very much involved. And when we when we rehearse the scenes beforehand, you know, for example, Barnaby Edwards, the lead Dalek operator, mm -hmm. he does all the movement, and I walk around behind him and say the say the lines. Now the reason I do that is because old I used to stand at the side and say the lines, but older mm -hmm. actors tend to look at whoever is speaking. Mm -hmm. So we found that if there are any older guest stars on the show, they'd immediately talk to me, you know, which would ruin the blocking of the scene. So now I sneak around behind Barnaby like I'm hiding up the back of his jumper or something. You know? <laughs> and that's our little system for, for rehearsal. So, yeah. But uh, largely, I would say I can't really call to mind any practical jokes because it's all quite serious and about getting it done, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah. I would love to be able to tell you a story about how I put a bar of soap into. Do we have John to make this Barrow. a two-hour episode now? Because you want to talk about the house, you want to talk bars of soap. Speaking of bars of soap, I don't want to talk about bars of soap anyway. <laughs> Speaking of bars of soap, we're on a commercial break. When we return, we're going to continue our discussion. Melanie is just giving me a dirty look. When we return, we're going to continue our discussion with Nicholas Briggs. When we return, please stay logged on, tune in, and continue to become part of the legend. Let's try it, that falls. <laughs> Welcome back to the legend of the traveling TARDIS. We have taken over, if you're watching us on the live feed, we have taken over this podcast because of legend TARDIS. TARDIS is now ours. We have to... Oh, wow. What's Nick doing? <laughs> I just saw a close-up <laughs> of the <it. laughs> I don't know if you. I don't know. You're not. Uh, it's like that, it's this. like that scene from the first Dalek story when they give him the fall medicine and everything goes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you're listening to this on the audio, um, we, uh, uh, Nick, <laughs> don't explain. Just keep going with it. Let people go. Just keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> Nick, 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 it. Has, pan, <laughs> Nick has panned the camera down towards his. Uh, uh, Dalek. Daleks. Daleks. Yes, <laughs> so we can see his Klingons. <laughs> He's panned his camera down towards his <laughs> Daleks. <laughs> Is this a Mad Libs now? <laughs> we got to... Anyway, speaking of Mad Libs, back to your chats. This is Faith Kelly. Um, she's our premier 13th Doctor. She's gorgeous. She's <gasps> absolutely morning. gorgeous. Good morning, yeah. And she says hello, good morning. But uh, 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 Faith, oh. give us your um, Instagram link so we can she is gorgeous. I, I meant there's very few 13th Doctors I have. We have, there's actually on the uh, Facebook page, The Legend of the Traveling Tardis, I actually have an album called No Sir All 13s. And it's nothing but pictures of the Traveling Tardis with 13s. Oh, All the wow. girls and a few guys who have posed as the nice. 13th Doctor there. That's yeah. Good. Just for, in that. honor of them. Tanya Harper. Hola. Hola. Uh, the wife jumped in. Christian oh, looks so Christian cute today. So <laughs> Great. Really? Never mind. Thanks, honey. And Meredith Lawlin, uh, don't, don't drop, drop the soap. The soap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's when I was panning down to my uh, Daleks. 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 <laughs> and... okay, so... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, uh, go, um, Faith no, after you. Made. I'm the doctor. Uh... Ring any bell? Yes, yes, it does, my dear. And here's her Instagram at uh, 101 cosplays to see. You check out faith out there there okay. what were you gonna so, say melanie i need to i have a question for nick i want to know about this moving story especially with COVID going on how oh. oh well the funny thing is we just put an offer in on a property about a day before lockdown happened and then everything froze now things have just um because uh boris johnson has made this incredible discovery that uh apparently uh COVID 19 isn't quite so bad for you if you want to create economic growth. <laughs> uh, oh, so oh, yeah. they've been, uh, and also if your political advisor gets into trouble, you better um, make a lockdown a little less strict so that mm -hmm. people forget about the polit political advisor. Um, so just being a bit controversial there, folks. Uh, so now you can buy houses, you can continue with the um, uh, I mean, I just saw the market out in the street today and no one was social distancing. So I just presume mm -hmm. I'll wake up tomorrow and everyone will be dead. But uh, that may that may not happen, folks. Um, so, yes, we're going to move. Now, I live in a quite a small coastal town 
And the funny thing about it was that I discovered after I'd been here for a while, and I moved here about 10 years ago, that Chris Chibnall lives here as well. And indeed, the beach here is the beach from Broadchurch. So because oh, Chris basically, okay. yeah, he, he wrote a story about sort of where he lives. And I and then I remembered that uh, when I bumped into Chris years and years ago, when we were doing Victory of the Darks, and he came to the set with one of his sons, and uh, he he just uh, he said, "How are things, Nick? You know, we used to bump into each other occasionally from time to time." And I said, "Oh, uh, well, fine, we're thinking of moving. Actually, oh, where are you thinking of moving to?" I said, "Oh, Dorset." He said, oh, "I live in Dorset." I said, "Oh, right, we're thinking of going to a place called um, I won't mention the place." And he said, uh, "And he said that's where I live. You should come. It's great there. There's loads of people. Oh, yeah, it's a really lovely atmosphere. It's quite a small place." And I said, "And I forgot all about that until you know after being there for a few years." And some silly comment I made about a restaurant on Twitter. He said i'm going to take you for a meal there nick so we went and had lunch there and we we had a couple of lunches and then the next thing is he becomes the little bit showrunner of doctor who um and so every now and again you know i've been around to see him uh and then people at the bbc cut out of interviews that i've said i live seven minutes away from chris chibnall because i used to say i live 10 minutes away from chris chibnall until i walked around there and realized i had to slow down otherwise i would have got there in five minutes <laughs> I don't want to be early. I don't want to seem too keen. <laughs> anyway, we were looking for a new house. And unfortunately for Chris, he does live in the nicest street in this town where all the nice houses are. And uh, so we ended up buying a house in his street, which is so I'm now about 30 seconds. or oh will be God. about 30 <laughs> seconds from Chris. Jimmel. I mean, the good thing is he's very good humoured about it. Uh, when we were having our second viewing of the house, my wife, my son and I just walked out in the street and I was saying, you know, Chris lives in this street. And my wife said, oh, God, yes, he does, doesn't he? And then she's and then I said, hold on, that's him. He was just walking ahead of us. She said, Go, uh, say hello. And I said, I don't want to bother him, you know. And she went, no, God. And I went, oi, Chris. And he turned <laughs> around. I said, I'm really sorry to tell you, mate, but we're, we're probably going to buy a house in your street. He said, oh, which one? I told him. He said, oh, um. I said, it's got three parking spaces. This is why I said, buy it, buy it. <laughs> because parking spaces are like gold dust in this town. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I texted him the other day and said to him, uh, we should be moving in on the 13th of July. There goes the neighborhood. Oh, my God. So, oh, my God. He, his, his theory is that there'll be a Doctor Who tour of this town and the bus will go down that street. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, Lord knows there might already be a tour for, for Broadchurch already kind of people still kind of well that's true i mean this is essentially Broadchurch we're living in so yeah oh, oh my God. i would tell you for, for, oh. for pedants out there the town in Broadchurch is not the town here it's just the beach area that was yeah. used for Broadchurch. they they film the town bits in a much more picturesque place mm -hmm. a lot further a lot further west than we are the it, further yeah. west you get the, the the more picturesque britain gets basically Mm -hmm. uh, years ago, I, a lot of people I, living in the east going how dare you say that <laughs> years ago i had the opportunity to do a, a 10k that was a, the jurassic coast 10k and then i ended up oh, right. broadchurch came out and i went wait a minute i know that ah, I, okay. I ran through it that, yeah some areas yeah. are very steep and they did, did a number on my knees so yeah uh, did you mm. did you go up that that bit of yes. cliff then? yeah the, it's really from, deep isn't it well, I know one side has stairs, or, or yeah, I guess you could call them steps because there's some wood planks to help get you up. But the other side coming down, yeah, there's that face is, I think it's more the picturesque stuff that you saw on, on the yes. show. That's, there's nothing there. You just no. keep going, pray you don't fall. And if you do, tuck and roll. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you wouldn't want to fall down there. No, that would be <laughs> quite. Sorry. There are clicking noises in the background because I'm just fondling this darling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It's a sort of like a security blanket, except Dalek shaped. Dalek shaped. But that's where I did learn oh. um, beaches there had pebbles because I'm I'm in Florida, so I'm always used to sand beaches, maybe even shells and stuff. But I never was used to that little pebbles being on a beach. I'm like, oh well, this is interesting. But yeah, it was it was oh, yeah, in, it was yeah. incredible watching the show and going, wait, oh my god, I I have photos from there before it became. Well, it did That's wonders for the tourism well. here, of course, because people came yeah. to visit to look at the, all the broad church locations. In fact, you know, I don't know whether you remember him. I think it was the second series of broad church. There was a little wooden hut that uh, David Tennant's character lived in, and um, yeah, it's like yes, yes, yeah, it's like on the yeah. water. Yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah, and it's tiny. It's tiny, and uh, I mean, you know, it's like someone's garden shed, really. 
and mm -hmm. but because it featured in Broadchurch, it sold for someone put it on the market and it sold for an obscene amount of money. It sold for the kind of money you'd pay for, you know, a two bedroom big house or yeah. whatever. But anyway. Well, that's a sales pitch when you sell your previous house. Nick Briggs lived here. <laughs> so <laughs> it's too late. Someone's bossy. Oh, well, uh, that's for the uh, next one. And it's next to Chris Chibnall. The next time. Yeah, it. yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're so not just, right next door. Right. I don't know how many doors away we are. I'm <laughs> I'm thinking five, six, seven, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, uh, Nick, here we go. I I did find a picture, not only that, uh, they sent it to me. It's both of them. It's uh it's Faith mm -hmm. and it's JR. Together with the traveling time. Oh yeah, they look great, don't they? They look yeah, lovely. They are very the, the traveling TARDIS there, which we have yet smart. to get a picture of you with yet. I got to get you here. But, yeah, well, I'm not going to be traveling Mel for quite some time. Let me tell you. Uh, no, <laughs> Melanie, when you go back, make sure Nick gets a time. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll just go. You know where I am. You're just you're 30 seconds away from Chibnall's house. Yeah, yeah, just just go to that cliff and stand on the top and <laughs> shout. <laughs> I, have, I have it here at the pre approved spot, oh, or I'll just go to the little, one of the little shacks with the little chippy, with the exactly. chippy places. Like it's yeah. here. You know, that's right. Where they, sell, where they sell fish and chips. Those have just some of those have just recently opened, actually. Oh my god! Oh, okay. I, yeah. Well, that's wow. why because now I'm kind of recollecting that area and thinking, wait, it's it's tiny. It's a very intimate, cute little community. Because I, I yes. we ended up staying for like at a B and B that was near Boyd. It's called the George or something. I think it was oh, called the George. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, well, that's, that's in this country we call that a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> but it we is very that. small. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the George. Well, they do a lovely pint there. Yes, I've often do. walked down and sat outside and had a pint on my own. You know, but sad, I remember on, that I am. on a weekend that they had like a huge. I guess it was like just on the weekends that uh, it was big on motorcycles that the, the community would go out there and just park like there and just have. That is know, every weekend. So That's, how it that happens every weekend? They're not social distancing, are they? They're not. Well, no, no, they are actually. They've got uh, metal um, barriers up, and the guys and they're, they're, it's they put big uh, sort of stone seats in there a while ago, and now the guys, yeah, I noticed them all sitting at each end of the seat, so they're doing pretty well. And um, what we're talking about here is not a, a, a group of violent people. We're talking about you know old guys who've had their bikes for decades. Weekend they, warriors. Yeah, what call yeah, them. And yeah. That's exactly it, and it's they're very quiet and very. Yeah, but that's been like that for for years and years. That West Bay, the area is mm -hmm. called, is is very um, is famous for for the bikers all turning up. Yeah, they are social distancing. They've changed the um, the road priorities there, so you can't go all the way around it now to help people to social distance. Okay, it's all fascinating. I hope you're all writing this down. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. My apologies about that. Me and Nick are just kind of reminiscing about the. Uh, I'm reminiscing yeah. about the area. Did you, did you see the um the the YouTube video with the lone Dalek out in the cul-de-sac? Yeah, what was he it, doing? What, where it got picked up by the the trash van or something? No, 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 no. It was it was just moving around because everybody was in quarantine in their house. So, isolate. So, so yeah, yes. so the Dalek's yes, moving yes. around in the cul-de-sac by himself, going, "We have taken over." <laughs> it was just so cool. Everybody stay in your homes. I'm like, and the Dalek was enforcing the uh, the, the the lockdown. So I'm like, this has got to be the best way to tell people stay home there. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. Speaking of staying home, let me go back to the chats just a little bit. We want to introduce Don Coulter. Good morning from North Cal Northern California. Yeah, well, th thank you, Don, for joining us out there. Morning. Um, Meredith is back, and she says, is that a Dalek in your pocket? Are you just happy to... Oh, hold shame on, on you, girl! Shame on you. <laughs> oh. <There's> a... <laughs> Meredith, bad, bad. I love you, but bad, bad, very yeah, bad. We we love her because she's bad. I think you'll find yeah, exactly. That's it. Faith is back. Uh, Florida beaches are full of shells. Tread lightly yeah. there. Dredging. And uh, Jr. says, "Love that picture." Faith is awesome. And right back at you, doctor. So the doctors are talking to each other. That's uh, nice, isn't it? It is nice, and um, it's like being in a doctor who's get a special. Room. <laughs> it's like when the two masters get together, uh, Missy and Master, and they're all flirting with each other. It's like those two. Yes. Like, you, you two, no, no, <laughs> no. Um, speaking of flirting with each other, when we return, we're going to uh, conclude our discussion with Nick Briggs. We, we promise we're going to talk more about his new audio book, The Human Frontier. When we return, please continue to stay logged on, tune in, and check out bigfinish.com when we return. Please continue to become part of the legend.
And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis for the final um. segment here. <laughs> Stop it, Nick. <laughs> uh, no. uh, for the final segment here with our interview with Nick Briggs, uh, no. known and best as the voice of the Daleks and other, other lots of other monsters as he's put into our intro beforehand. And also BigFinish.com. Yes, if you could line up every audio Doctor Who audio book line them up against all the video Doctor Who's. I don't even think they come close to the videos wise to the audios. I think the I think time wise. I think the audios are there are more audios than there are videos in length, right? I think hour wise. I think somewhere. you may be right. I think we have done I, more. I think I think there's more audios than there are videos, yeah. Yeah. It's I wouldn't a, like to, you know, um swear to that but uh, i'm pretty certain I, I think i think it's almost well looking at everything in now with the uh with uh torchwood with all the other audios out there um definitely you definitely surpasses it but that includes all the, all the shows that exist it's amazing we're talking more about his new book where is it Sorry, his new audio, The Human Frontier. And I believe that's the cast, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. It's a very small cast, really, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it is. Who's, but it's an it, epic story. Who's the woman on the right? Because she looks so familiar. Uh, Lucy Briggs Owen uh, with the longer hair. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, um, Lucy's been in a lot of Big Finish stuff. She was in uh, the, the War Doctor, actually, the first one. Uh -huh. playing, uh, yeah. uh, the companion in that Lucy does lots of stuff for us. I actually told her a while back that the rule was she had to be in everything I directed. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't quite make that true. And the fact, by the way, that Briggs is in her name, uh, we are not related in any way. I, I, don't, <laughs> okay. think, I, I don't think Briggs is actually really a part of her name. It was sort of inserted there to make her name different for the Actors Union Equity. So yeah, she's not a Briggs at all. I think she's an Owen. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. And what and about the other? The what lead. about the other cast members out here? Well, there's Clive uh, Wood, who's just behind Lucy there, uh, uh -huh. who is a uh, um, you know I was so pleased to work with him because he's someone who you know when I was growing up I saw at the Royal Shakespeare Company, and on so many big TV dramas, and he's such a fantastic actor with a real sort of Shakespearean energy and power to him. Petter in the middle there sort of plays the main character. Mm -hmm. She was new to me, but. Um, uh, she was recommended to me by Scott Hancock, who does a lot of directing and producing for us. And I heard her clips and just thought she was amazing. And she has a sort of, um, uh, she was always apologizing for herself, saying, oh, I haven't done much audio. Am I doing it the right way? Sort of like getting really involved and being physical. And, she, and I said, that's exactly what it's meant to be, Petta. Petta's got a quality about her where it, the acting is so good that it doesn't, doesn't sound, you feel like you're eavesdropping on a real person going through a real experience you know it's it's mm -hmm. quite amazing she's incredible and there's genevieve gaunt there next to her with the glasses and the slightly shorter hair genevieve again i've worked with her quite quite a lot she was in the prisoner uh, as oh, was okay. lucy briggs owen as well and then oh, yeah. uh, mark elstock behind her who um of course played the prisoner for us uh, you know number six oh, in, in our yeah. versions of the prisoner of course didn't have a beard when he did that <laughs> so it's almost like harry potter doctor who if you're going to be in one you're going to be in the other it's like big finish you have you have a, oh, a, a yeah. free range of all the audios <laughs> and of course so genevieve, we, we uh, cycle actors harry, and that's a good thing <laughs> mentioning harry potter there genevieve was in the harry potter films when she was a kid oh so, wow. yeah, i can't remember yeah. who she played but i've seen photographs of her from, as a little tiddler <laughs> I'm just curious, what what inspired you with the story of the human frontier? Where does that originate? Where does that come from? The inspiration for me is just this whole business of how everything is about context. You know, we try to create rules for ourselves, but given given you look at different views throughout history mm -hmm. and we, we change our minds about stuff so often and yet we're always so certain we're right about it. Right. You know, I think there are certain I mean you say things you'd say like, oh, killing people is a bad idea. But there have been times in history when killing people has been fine, isn't it? And there are still times in history, if there was a big war tomorrow against someone that we all thought was terrible, we'd suddenly reverse our decision on taking human life, wouldn't we? And, and yet we think that's a solid, um, I mean, I don't want to get into specifics, but what I'm saying is, that's what fascinates me about human beings. We're always so mm -hmm. certain that our world picture is correct. I'm as guilty of that as anyone else. I'm not accusing anything anyone of anything that I don't think I'm guilty of. And yet, 
that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to put people in a situation where everything they believed was questioned and the fear and the anxiety that creates and how you can ultimately resolve that or maybe you can't ever. I mean, I'm a little bit pessimistic about humanity, but at the same time, I'm extremely inspired by us as well. I think we can do incredibly good things. I mean, this whole pandemic that you've seen, I mean, you've seen examples of both kinds of behavior really, haven't you? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was the, if you're asking me for the root inspiration, that's what I wanted to do. And then, of course, I want to do stuff with lots of cool spaceships and uh, and monsters and spacesuits and uh, and stuff like that, because that, that's the window dressing I love. Um, so, yeah, that was, and I wanted to create a, a story that spanned centuries and really touched on, you know, the nature of humanity. And I was very pleased to c come across that uh, uh, title which uh, although I believe has been used as a Star Trek book title. It has. But, um, but it's, uh, yeah, but I've, n I've never read that book. Um, but uh, and it, it has, uh, um, but I've trademarked it, so it's mine. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You can I, look I, it I, up, I, I own it. Yeah, I do want to ask, because you were talking oh. about The Prisoner earlier, which of course you wrote the 12 episodes of The Prisoner Big Finish did, yes. and you carried over a lot of the cast, and it occurred to me, having listened to the set and being one of those rave reviews you were talking about earlier. Oh, thank you. Uh, you're welcome over on Warp Factor for anybody who needs convincing warpfactor.com. That, that was a lovely review. Thank you. Yes, I You're most that. welcome, sir. But I wanted to ask, because it occurred to me, you know, you talking about the various things it's about, but one of the things that for me kind of crossed over from the prisoner mm. into the human frontier is the idea of our relationship with technology. And also yes. the kind of the existential question of, is there, you know, how much free will do we actually have? You know, even sending people out into space, everybody ultimately ends up questioning how much is how much is of what I'm doing is actually what I want to do, rather than somebody pushing me into something. Was mm -hmm. that a deliberate kind of thing on your part to kind of explore that? And given that you brought over, you know, a good chunk of the cast of the prisoner over, was yeah. that something deliberate that you were thinking of when you were definitely, writing it? Definitely, definitely, Matthew. Uh, you put your finger right on that. That's another thing that really goes through all my work because we all think we're in control. And I, um, and what actually, it, my belief is, and, and I'm apo I'll apologize if I offend anyone listening. My belief is that what really is in control is coincidence, because when you get a system like human reality, the human race, and human history, and you would, if you drew lines between all the different events connected to all the people, it's a, it's vastly complex, and, mm. and the fact that there are coincidences of those lines. It's pure coincidence. We all like to believe we're in control. You know, it would be great if I could believe that the reason I'm the voice of the Daleks is because I'm a complete and utter, utter genius and it, and it was predestined that I should get the job. Now, that's just not true. I was just lucky. I've been really unlucky in so many other respects. I won't bore you with the, you know, we get the small violins out and play them. But in that one respect in my life, I was really lucky. I was really lucky that, you know, I became friends with Gary Russell back in the mm -hmm. days of doing fan audio stuff. And it's led to me doing the job I do now, you know, running the creative side of Big Finish. And likewise, you know, what was, imagine, show the trajectory of um, uh, Russell T. Davis. There he was in Wales doing that on television or whatever he was doing, not before Doctor Who, I mean, and me just piddling around, being unemployed, not not really doing much, not knowing where I was going. And our lines cross and Russell T. Davis changes my life forever, you know, making me the voice of the Daleks. The thing about being the voice of the Daleks, although it's crazy and maybe a bit sad, it's a thing, isn't it? And if you... If people know Doctor Who and they meet you, say, well, what do you do? And you say, you say, well, I, I do the voice of the Daleks. They're going to go, oh, the voice of the Daleks. I mean, that's just yes. such a wonderful thing to have happen to you. That, of course, the best thing on the other side of it, you know, just to uh, prick my pomposity, is people who live or been gr grown up in territories that didn't have Doctor Who. Right. And you say, well, I'm, I do the voice of the Daleks. They go, what's that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you think, yeah, means, <laughs> means nothing, means nothing, you know. So, yes, de definitely this whole aspect of control. And, of course, in the human frontier, mm -hmm. people have, uh, a certain section of people have got these uh, augmented artificial intelligences in their head. So they constantly can call up like a heads-up display and access other information and talk to each other through the AIs or, or whatever. So 
you know, the idea of is the AI controlling them or, or are they controlling the AI? And yeah. does it matter anyway? You know, because mm -hmm. people could say we're controlled by, you know, these devices, these phones, which we mm -hmm. never leave alone. I mean, of course, it can't control me. It can't sort of come marching up to me and biff me over the head if I don't do what it wants. But, but I'm so compelled. by. I was distracted just a moment ago because I was getting some WhatsApp messages. It controls me. You know. Well, I think you yeah. said it. Here's here's the funny part. You mentioned Star Trek, and I think this recalls. I remember this scene. I don't I don't know if you saw. Uh, I think it was Deep Space Nine. There's a scene where Quark is talking about the humans to Nog, and I'm paraphrasing the whole scene, but he basically said the human race are a bunch of wonderful, great people, but take away their safeties and their comforts. And you see what they're really inside. So oh, I think really good I of, think yeah. that's yeah. yeah. And I think you're seeing it now today in our current world, where you know we want we see the future like Star Trek. We see a um, what is that? Oh God, I'm stealing a line from the movie Nixon. Um, I don't know if you remember that movie. It's Anthony Hopkins as Nixon. He's looking at JFK, and in the mm -hmm. picture room, he's going like, "When they see you." they see what they want to be when they see me they see who they really are and oh, i thought that was yeah, the most yeah, powerful yeah. line to say that humans when they have what they need their creature comforts their cell phones and they've got it they are in a comfortable position because they have everything that they need in the but what I they consider the right. basics you're absolutely right yeah and if you strip all that away what are you left with a vicious animal really right. that's fighting yeah. for survival how, ma how many times have you seen somebody where this thing has gone out and gone completely ballistic monstrous yeah, sometimes yeah because yeah, and just when you can't get your own way i mean i went bonkers last night because something i was rewriting a script and you know i didn't get the the author sent me the script back but he didn't put all the changes in the tracking and you mm -hmm. would have think you know the tracking in a, in a word document and you would have thought that um, someone had shot one of my dearest friends by the way I was behaving. For five seconds, for five seconds, I completely lost it and then went, sorry, sorry, sorry to my wife. I, that's a ridiculous thing to lose my temper about. But just show, yeah, as you say, take away the thing that we think is important and we right. will just go berserk about it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's why people also tend to believe in conspiracy theories, because at least then somebody has control, you know, you know whether, you know, it may not be yeah. you, but somebody has control over something, you yeah, know, no matter how absurd it is. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. The fact of the matter is that largely uh, the, the, the human race is also useless and incompetent and messes things up. I think, you know. Like we, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't call myself a great conspiracy theorist. I don't, I don't subscribe to those things. But in my life, personally, I'm quite often saying I think that probably they said blah blah. And you think, hold on a sec, maybe it was just a mistake. Mm -hmm. Maybe they didn't get the call. Whatever, you know what I mean. And it's very because we're seeking meaning all the time. Yes. We want yeah. everything to make sense, which is why people love stories because life doesn't make sense, but stories quite often do. And that's why we're drawn to stories. St storytelling is the process of making sense of random coincidences. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> no, no problem. It's allowing you to see the architecture of how all these events kind of just combined, and then you had that that problem. Because I, I, I'm one of those, those people. I, I just firmly, I firmly believe, like if something happens, it didn't happen because of one specific reason. At mm -hmm. least five different little things set into motion made you have that car accident. Whether it was you yeah. left, finally left early, you left late, the other person. But you expand from those five things. Just, it's probably yeah. a thousand things. My mother has a phrase. Yeah, you know, she's ninety years old, ninety-one this year, and she'll say, "Oh, what is to be will be." And I try not to argue with her about it, but it's not true. What is no? Not is what is to be will be. That's not true. I said, "No, mum. You know." If you, if you don't walk into the road uh, without looking, then you won't get run over. So mm. it's you are in control as much as you can be. You know, of course, if someone decides to land a helicopter on your house and come through the roof, then you have no control over that. Mm -hmm. right. I don't know why I'm thinking of this crazy stuff. But speaking, um, of, speaking of no control, we're actually running out of time. Let me jump into the chats real. I know oh. we were just having a good time. I told you this is a two hour <laughs> show. Oh. Where can we find the audio drama that you've been friends here? <laughs> Something you know, I get excited, Nick, us, every yeah. time you show me a Dalek. So I'm like, where can we find the audio <laughs> drama? Human Frontier. Uh, it's at 
Bigfinish.com. Bigfinish.com. Tell them the legend of the traveling TARDIS sent you there. Um, let's get back. Uh, let's just finalize the chats. Is there a line or quote within the human frontier that is your favorite? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh, gosh. Wow. That's... I just oh my. can't. Uh, I, okay, moving I, on. Uh, anyway, so let me finish what I'm saying. Someone says, <laughs> you're, uh, but only human. That's the thing. Someone says, you're, Ooh. you know, but you're so human. And she, and she says, but only human. Wow. Oh, Gotcha. Uh, Chris K. David, thanks for joining us from Big Finish website. Oh, he puts a link up there, Ranges Drama Showcase. Thank you. Thank you there. Oh. Um, Don Coulter, Nick, did you ever have a line that was difficult to speak or trip over tongue twister? Uh, yes, it's uh, welcome to the traveling TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> I said, welcome to the traveling time. That's the one. Candace Rochette, when sci fi becomes reality, it's not cool as we have seen on the screen. Okay. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Don Coulter, the butterfly effect. And uh, yeah. Faith says, thank you, Nicholas Briggs. Oh, yeah. thank you. James, I, I'm just going to do this for you. If you can hear me, James, put your camera on. Just do it. Just do it. We're wrapping up the show, but I want to do it. There you go. <laughs> This is James Angst from Hello. Geekumi Radio, and I just want I just want to give him a chance to say hi. If He's he muted. Mike, as well. You're muted, though, James. James, I'm muted. James, you're muted. Yeah. Little button on the left. Yay! There you go. There Yay. you go. Yay! So I want to give him a chance. He's part of the team. He doesn't look sorry. Ending. The time, the um, time change. I was looking at you're on the East Coast, and I got the time change wrong because it's all wibbly wobbly, well, timey wimey. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That's okay. Well, and, very nice um, to see you there, Nick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, Nick, Faith asked me to do this. This is her as the 13th oh, doctor. Looks fantastic. She looks yeah. absolutely wow. yeah. Yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Nicholas Briggs, for coming on here. Bigfinish.com, please. Bigfinish.com. They have sales. Where do you want to start? Well, you know what? I'll tell you what. If you want to ever PM me or just send me a message, I will help you out. Start. It took me a while. I started at um, the Holy Terror, <laughs> which is still today my favorite uh, episode because it Fantastic. was something that was kind of unique. Because I, I, yeah. it started off what I thought was going to be a comedy and ended up in a heart wrenching tragedy. And that's it, what made me friends with Rob Sherman. I thought I have to meet the man who wrote that. Yes, it was. It was just a piece. It, it's it's a gorgeous piece of work for me. But you can find your own stuff at bigfinish.com. And again, please tell them the legend, the traveling artist that sent you there. Nick, any final words? Definitely want to check out the new audio of the the Human Frontier. I'm we're going to be downloading it and reviewing it later on, and then we can harass Nick when he's not here. <laughs> talk yeah, about yeah. his I talk will, about his new I'll, audio. I will be but, listening. Yeah, my final word is that uh, I regret my remarks about Rob Sherman's beard. <laughs> it's lovely <laughs> anything else about rob you want to regret or just as beard it's not like a we a garden full of weeds at all <laughs> all right well thank you everybody for the from all of us here at the legend of the traveling tardis james please check out geek to me radio when you get a chance and uh, uh matthew check out conquest Cerberus. we're going to be there in october hopefully some more uh, guests will be joining us but we're definitely going to be out there with a bunch of other podcasters earth station who uh the 20 megabyte podcast am i, am I right about 20 this? megabyte doctor who podcast podcast yeah melanie dean check out her work on uh pieces of melee at, at the your instagram and uh thank you all for coming thank you nick and um always continue to become part of the legend thank melanie, you how, well, hey, melanie have we cut <laughs> and then yeah. do, okay um we're still live nick but uh, this is just the after broadcast if we if we wanted anybody to chat or anything like that if you want to stay go ahead if you need to go i truly understand but um why is everybody got to look at your dog <laughs> it just amuses me it's, i like, it's, I like in camera <laughs> effects if somebody could if somebody could take this uh video and put some like uh 70s music you know the adult film music behind it as it's going up and down. Well, I was thinking that that could be like the wipe from now on when we go to a commercial. If it's on, just, just mirror. Oh. That's exactly, exactly it. it. <laughs> but, uh... Need face? Okay, we'll use this. Yeah, Nick, well, you know what? I, I think I'm going to end the broadcast because there's some things I do want to talk to you about off the air there, but is there anything... Okay. Uh, it, I mean, the, the audio recording is over at this moment. We're just at the after broadcast party, so people can... Oh, the, uh, Kevin Mize. 
Kevin Mays. Is there a Dalek a in your screen? Are you just happy to say yes? Yes. <laughs> window theater. Don't it's encourage fun. the man. Don't encourage the man. man. <laughs> um, for everybody who was with us, yeah, we'll go ahead and end the broadcast. But for everybody who was with us here uh, for both interviews, thank you so much. The audios of these interviews will be coming out later on in the weeks. We still have, um, still coming out, Yiji Cho. We still have Terry Malloy. I think he's actually dropped today. Terry Malloy dropped today. Um, Annette Badland had done last week. Um, yeah, Annette Badland was last week. Saturday. I think it's Terry Malloy. Yeah, was today. Nick, we've been busy. <laughs> we've been busy. Well, funny enough, there's a lot of people that are stuck in their homes on quarantine. Exactly. And we get on and we're like, "Hey, can, do you want to do an interview? Sure. Would you? Can we? Can we plug anything? Yes. Here we go. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, it was okay. Rob Schroeman who goes. Oh, are you still doing that show? <laughs> like, what? Oh, what is of his book. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're still doing the show. And he goes, yeah, I'm going to talk. And I, I said, I want to talk to the man who wrote Scared So and The Holy Terror, which is still two of my favorite today. Um, but no, yeah. I like The Holy Terror. I don't like Scared So. You don't like The Holy Terror. It's, it's no, I like, like The Holy Terror. Oh, you like The Holy know. Terror? Yeah, yeah. Don't like scared, you don't like, like Scared So. Don't like Scared I, just, I mean, you don't. No one knows how to say it. Skirt so shirt. So. <laughs> it's so, you don't like the pet word, so, or you don't like so the... net. So yeah. <laughs> What's that bit where they have to eat each other or something? I mean, what is the matter with Rob? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Rob, uh, who said, and yeah. I qu almost quote. Yeah. You know, there's a pandemic out there. Yeah, that's it's it, it's a bit of an inconvenience. <laughs> this is yeah, the yeah. same man. So. That, that'll be Rob. That'll be, that'll Rob. be Rob. There. That um, entire interview was just him on a microphone and us giggling like I, exactly. That that's, was literally it. it. Was like, hold on, we got to go to commercial. Okay, and Rob, go. And we, and we started yeah. doing something which is now catching on um, recently. Um, muting him. No, well, <laughs> muting him. Yeah. Um, but we had, uh, we're, we're kind of growing into this now, too, because uh, I don't know if you know, Simon Fisher Becker is part of our panel. He literally is part of the Traveling TARDIS panel, and he actually gets mm -hmm. to interview the other actors and, 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 and techs and all those guys who've worked out out there. Unfortunately, he wanted to be on this episode, but he couldn't because of time wise. He had, oh. uh, he had something going oh, on. I'm sorry to miss him. He's a charming fellow. He is a wonderfully charming fellow. However, um, we I decided we were going to interview Tim Trelaw and I finally got a hold of Tim mm, yeah. and we had him, just yeah. recently interviewed Katie Manning. Mm. So I thought, you know, it would be a great idea to put Katie on the panel and have all of us interview Tim. It was and mostly Katie interviewing Tim. It was mostly yeah. Katie. Interviewing Tim. <laughs> How did that go? Oh, but, I, but she kept going off on different tangents too. And they just play. It was, it was wonderful. It was we, amazing. Oh, they, we had a very so well together. Yeah. We had a very interesting technical issue because Katie could not get her Wi-Fi up to par. It wouldn't work on the stream yard. So what does, so what did we come up with? Tim grabs his cell phone, puts her on FaceTime. So he's literally holding the cell phone like and putting up to the microphone every time that Katie <laughs> says something so that she could be part of it. And it, yeah, it, it's, it's Kate, it's just Katie and Tim for basically uh, flirting for the most part. And, uh, it's just like, I, and I presume they told the story about how she locked herself in the loop. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then, yes. That's hilarious. We're all sitting there and his phone goes, he's like, Oh, it's Katie. He said, uh, where are you? Blood? She's in the loo. <laughs> she can't get out. <laughs> But she had great. She had. She had made sure that she came with like great questions on like things that we weren't going to be able to ask yeah. because she knew the okay when you approached going with you know the third doctor you know you have to emulate Pertwee but don't emulate him because that's not going to be you're emulating an actor and doing an impression. How do you go ahead and get to the role of your? It's the third doctor. What did you do? I mean, she had brilliantly constructed yeah. questions on top of just the, the effervescence. That's Katie. I'm going, hold on a second, love. I can't see my question. Wait. Okay. Yeah, this is what... <laughs> gotcha. No, no, but they talk about it a lot when we're doing it as well. You know, they talk about it quite seriously. And she's mm -hmm. she's incredibly supportive of him. Because, you know, she could have... Uh, we had no idea whether she would agree to it, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but she gave it a go and, you know, and hit it off with Tim straight away. Um, no, she's a... A wonderful human being, Katie. One of a kind, really. 
Yeah. Oh, I, I loved it. I, 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 love I, it don't, I don't remember where the interview is. We asked her, like, when they came up with the idea of the third doctor, and, and now it's going to be this guy. What would you go and she got, however, she talks, darling, it's, he did not sound like John. I would never have done this episode. I would never come back. <laughs> so, like, I got it. And he does. He's spot on there. James, I feel so bad. Did you have any questions for Nick while we're, we're, it won't be in the audio, but we have the after broadcast party if you want to. Had a question for Nick. No, I'm just, I'm excited to go back. I'm so sorry I missed this. Uh, just, uh, I had my alarm set for the wrong time and I got up and I was doing my thing. And I was like, I'm going to just kind of check. And I looked at the messages and saw that you, it was already happening. So, no, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I don't want to take up uh, any time. Yeah. I just, uh, it's nice to have Nicholas. Yeah, enough of things. <laughs> I, wore, I was wearing my Dalek shirt, though, for the occasion. I had it all oh, set to nice. go. Oh, nice. Oh, it's waving, it's waving oh. things, is it? It is. It, it's yeah. one of those anatomy of the, you know, type of. Hey. So, yeah. You know, you know how they have that um, video where they repeat something for 10 hours there, Nick? It should just be you panning down to your Dalek and going, oh, <laughs> that should be a GIF now. Somebody make that a GIF on the show. <laughs> Should do definitely it. do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to end the broadcast now because I just have a, a few questions for the Nick. Uh, for, Nick for the Nick. <laughs> for, for the Nick. Nick. For the Nick. Capital oh, T, capital oh, N. Nick. But uh, everybody, thank you for joining us there. We appreciate you. And um, always, if you want to subscribe, you can find us anywhere on the podcast. Uh, Meredith, you bad girl. It was a pleasure to listening in. Yep. Thank you, Meredith, for joining. Thank you, Meredith, for making all this happen because without you, we couldn't do the broadcast live. But we want to thank you. Um, Check out any of her stuff. Check, uh, subscribe to her YouTube. Um, Melanie, everyone else may have a Dalek, but you have a TARDIS. I know. <laughs> I have a billion other figures. I have more Sonics and Fourth Doc. I have the Fourth Doctor figure as the curator. I have. A I don't have a Dalek in here. I don't. What? You're dead to me. <laughs> I've, got Titan I've got Titan comic books. I've got <laughs> no Dalek. You might want to pay one right now while he's still on the line. So I've got a great mug. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't yeah know that's that is gorgeous. That's uh, Frontier in Space, isn't it? It's the Master's shirt. Yes. And also there's uh, the uh, Exilon. Thing. Oh my god! All right, hmm. we're gonna we'll we'll end the live broadcast, but Nick, stick around. I just had a few questions for you. Thank you, everybody, and continue to become part Take of the